Hi there, Steve Kaufman here, back from uh, the uh, Langfest, Festival des Langues in Montreal. Today I want to talk about how language learning has become so much easier today and how it's going to continue to become easier. Uh, first of all, Langfest was a great four or five days for me in Montreal. It's such a wonderful bilingual city, multilingual city. Uh, the people at the uh, conference, of course, there's this tremendous sort of feeling of everybody wanting to help everybody, everybody wanting to learn from everybody, everybody's learning languages. It's just positive, very wonderful feeling. So language learning is becoming easier. Um, for example, um, on Sunday, it'll be exactly three months since I started learning Turkish. If my tutor uh, agrees, I will do a video showing you sort of my progress. And I feel now that I'm progressing in all of these languages, which are different from French, Spanish, German, whatever, and therefore more difficult. And I'm progressing faster because language learning has become easier. Uh, a variety of reasons. One of which, by the way, is our mini stories. There's no question that these 60 mini stories with so much repetition spoken at a natural tone. You don't begin with, hello, how are you? the colors. You begin right in the language and you stay more or less at that level for 60 lessons and, and it becomes a little more difficult in that more tenses are introduced but in a sense you're gradually just getting used to the language and uh, I find that I'm speaking faster. So there are so many tools available, just the availability of mp3, the availability for example now that uh, we can access uh, Netflix or for that matter uh, YouTube um, videos where there are uh, you know subtitles closed captions we can bring those in as lessons and study them at length for example they're just so much more available um, which reminds me you know uh, I guess a year or two ago it was announced by the Canadian government that they were going to spend 16 million dollars to produce a language learning website so that Canadians would become more bilingual they would learn the other official language and this was part of a $2.7 billion five-year program whereby the Canadian government felt that they could increase bilingualism outside Quebec from 6% to 7%. $2.7 billion. Part of it is this uh, $16 million language learning website. Another $16 million has gone to a thing called the Canadian Language Portal. And there was a presentation on this at the Longfest. And it just amounts to a, a, a less efficient version of Google Translate, really, except that I guess to some extent the, the translations are vetted. But you can look up a dictionary. Uh, their justification is that, you know, some usage might not be Canadian and we need to have Canadian usage. Why that matters is absolutely beyond me. But that's $16 million. Now their website the, for language learning they, uh, they say is going to be um, available in 2020. So it's been two years, $16 million. And it turns out that they've given this work to the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation or Radio Canada in, in French. Well, you know, really, Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, Radio Canada, already has fabulous language learning material. It's all of their programs that are on YouTube and they you can turn on the closed captions and then with our link browser extension you can bring all of that into link as a lesson and most Canadians have had enough either French or English at school that they have learned that they can probably access these uh, TV programs if they are interested and motivated and if they are not interested and motivated no language learning website is going to help them. I suspect what will happen is that the CBC will take all this money, hire a bunch of people, teachers, develop a whole bunch of exercises and drills and questions and explanations and stuff, which is really A, not necessary, and B, insofar as explanations, because the world of language learning has become so much easier, it's all over the web. Uh, I can put a conjugating dictionary, for example, at link as one of the dictionaries, and I do that. Uh, for Turkish verbs, I go to a conjugating dictionary and I see all the conjugations, kind of review them quickly, get back to my text. So all of those things are already available in this wonderful world of easy language learning. Um, 
and of course I don't do drills I'm, and I'm not convinced that they're useful. Uh, I mean, you have only so much time to spend on your language learning. So are you going to spend your time engaging with content or are you going to spend your time doing answering questions and doing drills? I prefer to spend my time with uh, content. Now, admittedly, the mini stories are not tremendously engaging content, but they are designed with a lot of repetition. We have 60 of them. If there are any people out there who would like to try their hand at writing more in any language, we're willing to pay for that. I'm not going to get into how much or whatever, but I would like to expand that because they are a constant repetition of the key verbs, the key phrases, because after all, in learning any language, you just need to know how the verbs work, which you can Google for, how the nouns and adjectives work, which you can Google for, the prepositions, the pronouns, how they work. There's only a few things that matter. Word order, you get a sense of very quickly once you get into the language. You don't need to have that explained in great detail. And so once you access, easily access explanations on how these key parts of speech work, after that, you just need to acquire words and, and expose yourself to the language. Now, to jump right into these TV programs might be a little difficult. Uh, the 60 mini stories we have gets me you know, a fair distance to that, but there's still a bit of a gap there. So if we had another 60 mini stories, that would be great. And if they were written in, uh, you know, Chinese, Romanian, Ukrainian, it wouldn't matter. That would give us a little more cultural diversity, so to speak, because the stories we now have are written in English and translated. If we get stories written in some other language, we'll translate them back to English, get them translated into other languages. So yeah, they might be a little bit stilted, but they will again have key verbs, key uh, kind of phrasing, key conjunctions that you need in order to learn the language and they'll introduce a bit more vocabulary. Uh, speaking of which, some uh, you know publishers of language learning material still don't get it. So I bought Asimil for Turkish uh, when I was in Montreal and with it came a thumb drive and the CDs. I put the thumb drive in my computer and um, they had every single sentence almost like 30 seconds as a separate sound file. So that makes it very difficult to deal with. I can't, for example, um, so, so anyway, so that was no good. So then I threw the CDs in and saw that there at least they had one sound file per lesson. Now with one sound file per lesson, I was able to put that sound file on Happy Scribe and get a transcript because I have a monthly contract with Happy Scribe. So I am entitled to so many minutes of transcription. Now, if I transcribe a podcast, I don't have any text to compare it to. But if I transcribe a lesson from Asimil, then I can see in the book if there's any minor, you know, mistakes in the automatic transcription. Actually, it's pretty good. So now I had the transcripts. So then I had to painstakingly, painstakingly go through and put each one of these transcripts. So I get it from Happy Scribe, download it, copy paste and import it into Link. 71 lessons, that takes a long time. I still haven't imported the sound files. I still have to go in and tie the sound files to the lesson so that I can do all of those on Link, which is my preferred way to study because I can look up words, I can be in sentence mode, uh, all these things. Wouldn't it be wonderful if, and, and when we're in Fukuoka, the people from Asimil are going to be there and we will ask them again if we can integrate with their system. And I think we are continuing to develop ways in which we can access, you know, material, television programs, YouTube videos, Netflix, audiobook, ebook, and bring it in as learning material at Link. One thing of interest, and as I say, this, you know, the ASIL mill material, which actually, unlike the mini stories, which are more or less at the same level all the time, slightly more difficult as you progress, the uh, ASIL mill material gets more difficult pretty quickly. So it starts very easy, very slow, and gradually picks up speed and increases in complexity. One thing that was interesting, as I import these lessons into Link, you know, the amount, the number of new words uh, doesn't necessarily, you know, get more and more and more. So you might have lesson 35 might be 40% new words and lesson 50 is 21% new words. So I'm able to go through 
and pick 21, 22% new words, do those first before I go to 40% new words, which in the ICML text might be earlier on. Because again, they have no idea which words I know, right? So, but obviously it helps. Again, it makes it easier if you can have a gradual progression. And so, um, ICML, fine. A any of this kind of material is good. Uh, and it's fun to have something that I do on online and then I'm able to read it in a book and you're kind of getting it in both ways. Uh, but so the point is that language learning for all of these reasons has become easier and as we get going, if we're able to integrate some of this learner material, Ollie Richards, uh, you know, graded readers, any other material, if we can integrate those with Link, you know, it's going to give us a, a smoother progression from say the mini stories through to, you know, call it authentic content. I pointed out earlier that the uh, Netflix movies are typically at a lower level of unknown words because the dialogue is kind of simpler. So these are all the things that we're working on, not only us, other people. It's all going in the direction of making language learning easier than ever. And I repeat, if anybody is genuinely willing to work with us in creating more mini stories, point of view stories, like uh, he did something, then I did it, and then questions. I mean, you can see these at link. Uh, we are very interested because I think that could help. Just another 50, 60 stories takes us a little closer. Uh, another more opportunity to review the same structures and the same tenses and the same uh, preposition usage and so forth uh, before we launch into the authentic material. Uh, and getting back to the CBC, it's astounding that they're going to spend $16 million on doing something that from a language learning perspective, essentially is already available. Anyway, thank you for listening. Bye for now.